Dugisia trigonera, also known as Giardia trigonera, is a small aquatic planarian or flatworm which lives in freshwater environments such as lakes and streams. These small worms have many distinct anatomical features, which include their eye spots, giving them a unique cross-eyed appearance, their auricles, ear-like projections at the anterior end of the organism responsible for receiving chemical signals, and the gastrovascular cavity, from which a tubular structure called the pharynx protrudes and acts as the mouth, digesting anything taken in by the organism. Planarians, particular to the family Dugesia, have contributed much to the scientific field, specifically for their ability to asexually reproduce and stay alive by regenerating body parts when severed. However, scientists are also beginning to discover unique predatory behaviors in planarians as well, and are beginning to suspect that there is much more group communication and cooperation than they would have thought before. Although a relatively new focus of study for planarian research, hunting and predatory behaviors in planarians have been observed and documented as far back as the 1950s when biologist and animal psychologist James V. McConnell published a manual on psychological experiments for planarian behavior in a magazine entitled The Worm Runner's Digest, which he himself created. Predatory behavior begins when planaria set out long, thin lines of mucus. The amount and prevalence of this mucus varies from species to species, but all are intended to vibrate when prey cross them, similar to a spider's web. If the prey is nearby, chemical receptors in the auricles pick up the chemical markers for prey, and in which case a mucus trail might not be necessary for hunting. Here we see planaria that have detected the presence of a common pond snail. Only a few of them approach the snail, climbing on top of it and encircling it while others gather around. The specific purpose of this exercise isn't fully known, but McConnell and others have hypothesized that this behavior is analogous to the encircling behavior of constrictor snakes. Once an individual has successfully wrapped itself around the snail, it will let go of the wall and both prey and predator will sink to the bottom of the tank. Once encircled by one, the snail is easily dominated by the rest of the worms, which join the first member and form a tight ball around the snail. At this point, more mucus as well as digestive enzymes encapsulate the snail. The final stage is to consume the enzyme tissue slurry. The pharynx performs a pumping action that helps tear apart the tissues, which are further digested once inside the body. Any indigestible material is simply pushed back out through the pharynx. Here we see the empty shell of a recently digested snail. In this particular case, the planarians which hunted it were not hungry enough to fully consume it. When this happens, the planaria will form a mucus sac containing digested snail tissue to be consumed at a later point. Dugesia trigornina is a gregarious or community living species. As such, they depend on cooperation to hunt down larger prey items. With this idea understood, it opens a world of questions to the sociability of planarians. How are they communicating with one another? Are there small, subtle signs yet to be discovered by humans? Are there chemical signals not yet understood? And how can these communications in hunting translate to their sexual reproduction? or the reaction to finding themselves the prey instead of the predator. In the field of biology as a whole, these tiny, flat creatures have made incredible contributions. 
but in the field of ethology it seems we have only scratched the surface on what these carnivorous little worms can show us about life on our planet.